sorry, has everyone got vectors and values for those vectors? You need to start getting comfortable working in algebra because there'll be plenty of examples in this class where you won't know particular variables and you'll have to work through an entire problem with those variables carried through. Uh, so what have I got on the left here? Reaction force going up. And what value is that? F12. F12. Easy. What else have I got? Moment. Moment? Which direction? Is it going to be into the page or out of the page? Into the page. Into the page? And what's the value of that? at x 
equals L on 4 equals FL on 8 plus FL on 8 equals FL on 4. So this guy is going to come up to about here, FL on 4. Done. That's going to go over there. We know that's going to go to negative if we did our numbers. And that's going to come back down to zero like that. All right. Is everyone comfortable? I mean, we could have done another one of these over to the right here and confirmed all of those things, but is everyone comfortable with the, the way that those curves go? Yeah? Makes sense. All right. The reason that I did that, firstly, is because it can be difficult to deal with one of those moments explicitly on the diagram, and sometimes it gets even more complicated when one of those is added to the end of a cantilever and you can start to get a little bit of confusion around it, so practice those. A good one to practice might be something like... Something like that. All right. And then you need to calculate what the reactions and all of that kind of stuff are. So there's all of these different ones, so you can set up your own problems to practice. Okay. So start to get really comfortable with all different combinations of moments and forces and shears and all that sort of thing. All right, we're going to do one more problem, and this is the reason that I gave you this problem. Because this is largely what we're going to do in the tutorial as well. Fundamentally, this whole front surface there 
that entire area, that entire height of beam, all it's doing to this is acting like a wall. The entire height is carrying any of the vertical load, the entire height is carrying any of that bending load. So it's the, the actual height of the member that's carrying that bending. And so what we would do if that was a wall is exactly what we do here. We have a shear on the front face, is it up or down? Down. What's the value of that shear? F12. Easy. Moment is it out of the page or into the page? Out of the page. Out of the page. Out of the page. M equals what? FL on 8. FL on 8. Nice. Remember so. We just did it two minutes ago. Okay. So what do we got on that face? A shear? Up or down? Up. The value of F12. And what else have we got? Moment into or out of the page? Into. 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 Beautiful. Value of? FL on 8. FL on 8. Okay. So before we do anything, let's have a look at those forces. Are there any external loads there? So splitting it and calculating the internal forces of one on the other and the other back on there shouldn't add any external forces or moments. And by, what, by that I mean if I then glue them back together, any forces that I calculate have to cancel out. Alright, let's look at the shear. Shear's down, shear's up. You add them together, do they cancel to get zero? Yeah. Moments, out of the page, moment into the page, you add them together, you calculate the same value, do they cancel out when you add them together? Yes, so we know we've done it correctly because they cancel out. Every single time you take a section through and calculate internal loads on one side or the other, they should cancel out, which means they have to be equal but opposite. Okay? And that's going to be important because we're going to have pulleys on shafts and things like that, you're going to need to calculate the forces from a pulley on a shaft and shaft on a pulley and that kind of stuff. So when you take it off, it's just internal forces between the two members and they need to be equal but opposite. You may need to make sure they're in the right direction, but they need to be equal but opposite. Because we need to be able to glue this back together and have no external loads present after we do so. Alright? Now, we've got these forces. We can do shear force and bending moment diagrams pretty easily, hopefully. Version of the free body diagram. Like so. Just sort of read all that so that's nice and easy for us. Okay, so that was F on two, F, F on two, uh, F. What was it? L on 8, F L on 8, F on 2, F on 2. Alright, shear force diagram, bending moment diagram. Are we okay? Yeah? Alright. So what's my shear force diagram look like for this one? Positive or negative? Is it a straight line? Is it a vertical line? Positive straight line at FL on 2. Easy? F. Ah, oh, sorry, F on 2. Positive. Done. What about bending moment diagram? Is there any bending moment at the very beginning? No? So we start at zero. You can do a couple of little sections. Uh, and as you move out, if we were to cut it there, it would look like this and this. And
and that will be multiplied by x as x increases your bending moment on our positive sign convention increases and so that's going to increase up to a value of what?
Alright, now um, one thing, people sometimes get caught up in this subject because a lot of the questions are worded questions. So you might have, if you've got the textbook yet, you'll see a lot of the, t the, the questions are worded questions, so you need to interpret that. Alright, oftentimes that's really important if you have a worded design brief or something like that, you need to be able to then go and the first thing we do is really draw a diagram and then go from there. So um, get comfortable reading worded questions.
So make sure straight up and down lines are straight up and down. Make sure back at 30 degree lines and back at 30 degrees all throughout your drawing so that uh, it's easy to interpret. All right, so we have a shaft. All right, I'm going to draw some axes.
Right, something like that. So if you're reading this in a textbook, I don't expect you to rewrite the passage from the textbook, but you need to summarise it in a sentence or two, just the main points. All right, we need to write down what we need to find. What have you been asked to find?
Ah, uh, yeah, just assume it's, it's you know, infinitesimally small. Uh, draw a free body diagram and shear force diagram and bending moment diagram in the X, uh, Z and Y, Z planes and then combine bending moments at where we're asked for A and B. Is it A and B? Yeah, A and B. Okay, so all you need to do is look at the components and you have to use some um, trigonometry here to get the vertical component and the horizontal component of that force. But that's the equivalent of two forces, one down and one out. Um, so you do one plane completely ignoring the other plane and then you do the other plane completely ignoring the first plane. And then you have Two values of any moment. If that's as far as you get, that's fine. This will continue the use in the next lecture. If you want to take it a little bit further and think about the Pythagoras thing, good. All right, I'll see you guys all on Monday, and we'll have a go at some of those splitting, um, splitting components to get the values.